happens when the theme is divine feminine. Yay! Okay, <laughs> y'all. God bless. I'm so excited for tonight. Why? Because tonight is special. Because sometimes, very rarely, in my life does this happen. I get to use my liberal arts degree. Y'all, yeah. I majored in women's studies in college. I wrote not one, but two theses. I on uh, the history of drag queens and the transgender movement. <laughs> I traveled to Amsterdam where I did a study abroad program on cross-cultural comparisons of gender and drag queenery. <laughs> and for the past 10 years, I have been Miss Ginger Divine, Reno's number one drag queen. <laughs> I'm still gonna win the crown as best drag queen in Reno. <laughs> That's how good I am. Now, tonight we discuss the divine feminine, and it's kind of ironic because my talk is all about men in the divine feminine. So interesting little tidbit, we're gonna do a Women's Studies 101. I wanna differentiate some terminology to y'all that will frame my conversation. First of all, there is man and woman. Those are biological sexes. <coughs> usually assigned at birth, usually determined by genitalia. Now there is masculine and feminine. These tend to be more traits, mannerisms, behaviors, more of the psychological than necessarily the biological. You could be female bodied, but have a strong masculine disposition. And <laughs> you can be male bodied and have a strong feminine disposition. <laughs> so, we have been lied to and I'm gonna debunk many myths and lies that have been force-fed to us over the years. The first lie is that we live in polarizations. We live in a world where if you are male-bodied, you therefore must be masculine in all ways, shape, and forms, and vice versa for females and feminine. The idea that an individual can embody both masculine and feminine tendencies and traits at the same time is unheard of because lack the reverend talked about earlier i was one of those boys i was one of those boys that was special when i was young and i was i am special god bless you god bless you thank you but i had individuals telling me in my life that that specialness was cause for concern because I didn't act like the other little boys that I hung around. I was in touch with my feminine side from a very early age and that was something that was scorned and tried to beat out of me. And this is what's happening with our boys today and that's why I want to specifically talk about men because men are in trouble, y'all. Mm -hmm. We're all in trouble because somehow the second lie that was fed to us is that feminine energy and females are beneath the male order. We have been told that feminine equates with weakness. We have established genderized nouns and pronouns and adjectives and that things like strength and courage and confidence are only inhabited by men and that women cannot utilize their strength, their courage their confidence. But at the same time, we have told our boys that they cannot be creators in their own right. 
We have told men that they cannot be embodied within themselves. We have told men that they cannot be in touch with their feelings because if they are not rocks on which they can be leaned upon, then they are not true men and therefore they are worthless. So I don't know who has been spreading these lies that we are all worthless, but they need to be smacked upside the head. Yeah, yeah. Really? amen. Thank you. So how do we bring about this balance? How do we bring about this harmony? I'm reminded of the great Nelson Mandela who said, it is not our darkness that we are afraid of. We are afraid of our light. And that is why we tend to shy away from these different energies. We fear the void. We fear the gradations between these polar opposites. Because what will we find in the void? The void is unknowing, it is uncertain, and that is scary, or at least that's what somebody told you. Now, in my studies of the woman's studies major, <laughs> it was interesting that I learned that many cultures and tribes throughout the world historically had revered spiritual positions for individuals who were two-spirited or embodied both masculine and feminine energies into one they were believed to have a greater connection with the spirit of. <laughs> and then what happened? America. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Unfortunately, rampant imperialism and then colonialism and the rise of a monotheistic religion that placed the Almighty Father above all else ruined and squashed that and those individuals who embodied both masculine and feminine and did not fit into a single box were outcast and branded as transgressive in their own right. Because somebody fed us the lie that you have to be a man who is masculine and a woman who is female and then they pitted us against each other. That's right. right. Why are we fighting? Why? We are fighting each other, and internally we are fighting ourselves. Why is that? We are gender policing ourselves. And sometimes I notice among my friends that if a man embodies feminine life tendencies, he is a caregiver, it's like this huge shock. Like, Oh my God, like you held that child and you didn't drop it on its head. Oh my gosh, I'm so impressed with you. Similarly, if a woman is strong, decisive, we are taking it back. It's like, oh, she's gonna kill somebody. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Why are we shocked? Do we have such little faith in ourselves that we believe we are incapable of bringing harmony and union to our masculine and feminine energies? Are they so foreign to us that we surprise ourselves and everybody in our life when we do something that is not quote unquote in line with our sex? Mm -hmm. Is that so shocking to have a man who is able to care and give for another and have a woman who is strong and able to fight? Is that so outside of the norm? Now, I'm gonna read you something. A quote. <laughs> the reason why I specifically wanted to talk about men is because there's a battle happening right now. And this individual, Starhawk, who is a founder of the reclaiming movement, says that men are internally split into a spiritual self that is supposed to conquer their baser animal and emotional natures. They are at war with themselves. In the West to conquer sin, in the East to conquer desire or ego. Few escape from these wars undamaged. Men lose touch with their feelings and their bodies. 
Now, when I used to work at Planned Parenthood, just adding to the I love women conversation, <laughs> we had a therapist, and I'll never forget the first day that I sat down in a room with this woman, and she mocked me. Ooh, she was so good, she pegged me. Because she would ask me to talk about my feelings and open up and do all these things, and I talked from my head. It's easy. As a man, that's what you're taught to do. Rationalize, critically think, objectively view a situation. And so when she asked me to talk about my feelings and emotions and things that were happening, I was speaking from my head and she's like, ah, I need you to drop into your body. I need you to get out of here and I need you to get in here. And that was so difficult for me so profoundly hard because I realized, just like Starhawk said, I had spent the majority of my life outside of myself. I did not know how to become embodied. I did not know how to get in touch with my feelings because it was something that was never taught to me. In fact, the opposite was taught to me. If I showed any expression of emotion whatsoever, I was penalized. If I was sensitive, I got beat up. If I had any anger, I was penalized by sent to detention or suspension because I had anger issues and I was just a little child that was violently acting out. If I had attention disorder because I didn't know where to focus my energies, I was grounded as having ADD. How are we supposed to be? I don't know. How are men supposed to act? What does it mean to be a man? Why is it so wrong to have feminine-like qualities and tendencies? Is it any wonder that the men in our lives right now are suffering from high rates of suicide, high rates of substance abuse, and erratic emotional outbursts because they do not know how to process and handle their feelings because nobody taught them how. Nobody taught them to be caregivers for themselves. And we need to stop that. We need to recognize the harmony that is possible and achievable within ourselves. We need to recognize that light that is neither masculine nor feminine that exists within all of us. That God spark of authenticity that exists within you, that knows no gender, that simply is you in all of its facets. Now, when I thought of this topic and I was coming through the talk, I was immediately reminded of Rent. Any fans of Rent in the house? Thank you. That's right. That's right. Now, there's a line from the epic song Love You Bohem. The opposite of war isn't peace, it's creation. Creation we associate with the divine feminine that most of us know. The defined feminine, the feminine qualities that exist within us have the ability to grow, to foster, to nurture. However, the opposite of creation is not war. And whoever told our young boys that the qualities that they embody as masculine entities is war and destruction is false. Because the opposite of creation is conclusion, is ending is closing, is death. You cannot have life without death. It is the harmony that we are looking for. It completes the cycle and the circuit. So I want you all to stop believing the lies that you've been fed. I want you to recognize yourself as whole, just as you are. Do not fear what you do not know. Embrace it openly, for it is a part of yourself. Live your life and live your truth, my friends. God bless.